brain. And finally, today it makes sense because we have a first time guest, Dr. Sarah Savoshi. You are a neurologist. Great to have you on the show. Thank you. What do you think of our brain art? <laughs> I'm not sure I can agree that it looks like a brain, but it is pretty. It does to me. It definitely isn't cool, and this is why we, we keep it going. <laughs> so I'm excited to have you on the show. Interestingly enough, I just ran into you at the gym, and I started yeah. to geek out with you on this very topic of neurology and neuroscience. Mm -hmm. Big words. I don't want to confuse people, but can you simplify it and let them know what it means to start? Sure. So neuroscience is sort of difficult to simplify. It's a very vast field. Sure. Um, where we study the brain and we study the neural circuits. Um, for the layperson and for the public, it's incredibly important because there's things that we can do to prevent the progression of diseases pertaining to the brain. Um, so, you know, we, we geek out a lot about research and about different sort of um, new innovative uh, genetic screening and, and things of that nature. But for the general public, it's really important to know a couple of things okay. that we can do to prevent disease. Okay. So I want to dive into that. Would you say that this science is advancing exponentially? It seems like yeah. it is to me, but I really am fascinated by it, how the mind and body communicate conscious versus subconscious. I mean, I'm just, I'm just into the whole thing. Yeah. Am I unique, or are you seeing more people of interest in this? Is there a lot more money being spent? Do you feel like the knowledge around it is advancing? Absolutely. So one really important thing pertaining to neuroscience that's kind of changed the game is something called neuroplasticity. Okay. Have you heard of this term? I, I just heard it yesterday, yeah, I swear. Yeah. I mean, I probably heard it a few times, but it, it sticks. I was listening to a podcast yesterday, but go ahead and explain yeah. what it is. So neuroplasticity is this phenomenon we know that the brain can change. So we at one point thought that your brain as an adult does not change. Okay. It doesn't grow, it doesn't transform. But we now know that as an adult, if you have some sort of insult to the brain, be it a traumatic brain injury, um, be it a stroke, that part of the brain can be damaged and die, mm -hmm. right? But the tissue around the brain, really interestingly, can take over the role of the tasks of that part of the brain that died. So if you have really strong neural networks and circuitry, those neural networks can pick up the slack and take on the responsibility of brain that's died. All right, let me chime in. What if you haven't had a stroke or you haven't had brain damage and you're simply someone who wants a stronger brain memory be more in control of your thoughts. Yeah. How does that work? So that's really important. As we age, invariably, doesn't yeah. matter. As we age, our brains shrink, unfortunately. It's just what happens. Okay. Our body shrinks, our muscle mass shrinks, and our brains shrink. So we know that that happens. The degree of which that happens, we can sort of be in control of. And neuroplasticity, if you've got really strong neural networks and you've been working, working on strengthening the brain, you can sort of slow the progression of that decline and that level of shrinkage. What about this idea that you can reprogram things? You know, I look yeah. at like, and by the way, I am not the expert on this, but I look at the subconscious as kind of the recording of your life that, that does most of your day-to-day -day execution on things. What about this idea that your conscious mind, by being more conscious, you can actually kind of, like think of that movie, um, The Law of Attraction, mm -hmm. uh, where you can kind of think and bring things into your life. How, how does that play? Yeah. Hocus Pocus or? No. What's, I, what's the I, yeah. science around that? So a lot of that comes to this uh, sort of umbrella term known as mindfulness. Okay. So if you are mindful of yourself, you're mindful of your thoughts, you're sort of able to focus on downplaying stress and anxiety. So really important along those lines are, you know, so I see patients in a clinical setting that come to me and say, doc, I can't think, I can't memorize things, I'm not able to remember anything, I think I'm getting Alzheimer's disease. Mm. And they may be 30 years old. And I'll take a look at them and after a thorough evaluation realize they are incredibly anxious and depressed. Mm. There's something called pseudo-dementia. And it's not that they're faking it, it's that their stress and anxiety is so prevalent that it mimics an Alzheimer's disease process. Wow. But by being able to mitigate your anxiety, lowering your stress levels, being mindful, you're able to lower those stressors that would not cause that pseudo-dementia process. So there's probably some sort of a spectrum, right, where 
brain damage, serious things have happened. What you're describing is someone who has anxiety, stress to the point of where it's creating some sort of disease, or maybe just people here that are tuned in and you're going about your everyday life and maybe you want a little less anxiety, you want to be a little more controlled. Things. I think these things really apply across that spectrum. It's just how extreme. So what, what are some like good takeaways, good advice that you would give to anyone who wants to just empower their brain yeah. and be more conscious and be more mindful? So number one, you want to focus on building those neural set ne networks and making them stronger. So always challenging your brain, learning new things. Um, in my patients who are getting older, who are retiring, I advise them to learn something new, learn a new language, learn a musical instrument, learn a physical activity that requires mind and body coordination to strengthen those networks again. Um, in anyone, I always recommend eating healthy, four days minimum of aerobic exercise, 30 to 40 minutes in each of those sessions. We know that by regular aerobic exercise, you can strengthen your brain and prevent the progression of neurodegeneration and that shrinkage that I was talking about. Those wow. things are all really important. Well, I hope that our audience follows you. Keep an eye on this one. She is, an, well, first of all, you're a doctor. So you're already not an up and comer, you're already there. But I look yeah. forward to the books you're gonna write coming on the show, sharing your intelligence with our audience. Even if it's just me, even if the cameras weren't on, I think this is also fascinating. Dr. Sarah, thanks for coming on the American Dream. Thank you so much.